Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video which I am so excited for because we are going to be trying out some new Prada makeup. Prada have entered the makeup and beauty space. I've got eyeshadow, foundation, lipstick <laughs> beside myself. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so Prada makeup has arrived, kind of. <laughs> it seems like someone accidentally had a bit of a whoopsie press of a button a couple of days too early at Harrods and so all of the products were available on Harrods a couple of days ago Saturday I think when I picked up all of my products they have now been taken down it's showing as like sold out I don't believe it's sold out what I think happened is there was a whoopsie daisy pressy of button a little prematurely and someone has been told off someone is in deep water someone has been told off severely I imagine and everything has been taken back down the and like launch date was announced as the 1st of August so I definitely think that was an accident and, but they have obviously honored our orders which is fantastic but I think this will officially launch again on Selfridges and Harrods on the 1st so tomorrow imagine the stress if that was you <laughs> but the good news is is due to this accidental button pressing we got to see all of the products and get our hands on them a couple of days early and now you guys can check out all of the reviews these are pricey products it is prada after all they are a luxury brand of course the price points are up there we're going to find out whether they are in any way shape or form worth the price here is what they have to offer us so there are six eyeshadow quads. These are all along the same theme, inspired by Prada's prints, and they feature three more muted or neutral shades and then one pop of colour in each of those six quads. They will set you back £65 or $76 and everything is refillable. So they are also all available in the refill palettes as well. So if you don't want the packaging, you want to save yourself a few pounds or a few dollars, then you could pick up the refill and skip on the packaging. There is then a foundation, which is a medium luminous hydrating foundation available in 33 shades, and that will set you back £49 or $57, again available as a refill if you don't want the swish packaging. And then there are a range of lipsticks, very heavy on the ready orangey tones, and they are available in two formulas, but both are matte. There is a soft matte and then a hyper matte, and these will set you back £37 or $43, again refillable. Everything is made in France. I picked up one of everything. I chose the soft matte lipstick formula because hyper matte sounds horrifying to me, okay? I'm a glowy, glossy, balmy, shiny kind of girl. And soft matte is my preference. If we're doing matte at all, I want it to be soft. Hyper matte horrified me, just sounded too much like life sucking, you know? So I went for the soft matte. So first off, let's take a little look at this packaging, see how it feels, see if it feels and looks expensive, because it is. So first up, let's have a look at the eyeshadow quads. Very shiny, very sleek, decent weight to it, but not heavy. You can see at the back there where you're gonna be able to push this out to refill it very handy like that. Magnetic closure, nice and smooth, really nice size mirror, decent quality mirror there as well. Packaging looks nice and everything feels, it does feel nice, it does feel luxurious and it looks it as well. Two of those god awful little brushes in there for good measure. Luxury brands just love a useless little brush, don't they? So I picked up the shade 01 Portrait. I will swatch this for you in a moment. It feels nice. It's got a really nice weight. It feels like, it feels luxurious. It's exactly what I wanted. I think it looks so beautiful, very understated, elegant, but it feels like it cost a lot of money, you know? As you can see, I went for the 01 portrait color story. I just felt like none of these color stories massively appealed to me. They all were a little bit 
sort of motherhood I felt like and the pop color just wasn't really a color that I would use. I felt like this was the most me of all of the quads and I wanted to try the formulas to share with you guys. And actually in person, the purple is much less intimidating than it looked. Let's swatch it. So you have this sort of narrow band of color up here and that richer shade and then the three triangles, but the purple definitely much more muted than I expected it to be. Oh, they feel soft and plenty of pigment there as well. Lots of people asking if this like larger pan could be used as blush. Should we try that? And maybe try this shade as highlighter today? Why not? <laughs> Let's play around. Okay, not a bad swatch for that type of shade. Usually they can swatch a little patchy, those really rich, cooler browns. That was the worst swatch ever on the bottom. Let's try that again. <laughs> Shouldn't really use my little finger, should I? Okay, so I slightly built that up. One, because I swatched out my little finger and two, because it was a little light pigmentation wise. No description of the shades yet, especially as they've taken all the information down off the website. But to me, these look like a matte, two satins and a shimmer, which looks so smooth. I'm really, pleasantly surprised by this color story actually. Like this is way more wearable than I thought this little quad was going to be. I sort of picked it up just to try for review purposes and I thought I'm not gonna like it. But actually seeing it swatched, I think I will. They feel very soft and creamy and they all had a nice bit of pigment. The purple was definitely the least sort of pigmented shade, but given that I didn't want that to be like too neon, I'm quite happy about that. Okay, so let's have a look at the foundation packaging. I'm excited about this. So this is described as having a medium coverage and a luminous finish. Also claims to have 24 hour wear smoothing properties and also to be transfer resistant. There is no SPF in here. Does feature a pump. And again, this is refillable. Oh, so, so this part is glass and then the external bit is plastic. So really good to know that if you wanted to save, like I think eight pounds, something like that, this would be completely usable by itself if you just wanted to purchase the refill. Just slots in there very easily. This packaging, because of the plastic outer part, it feels weighty and the bottle inside feels nice and luxurious, but obviously if you're using the full packaging, you don't feel like you feel the sort of lighter plastic. The cap is nice, the packaging, I love this little square with the Prada logo on it, but it doesn't quite feel as luxurious. It does feel weighty, but because you're feeling plastic and not the glass bottle inside, it doesn't feel quite so luxurious. But let me tell you, I'm nervous about this shade because there was no information on the site at all, no swatches, nothing, literally just the letters. So I chose the shade MN50, which I took to mean medium neutral 50. There were also MW, warm shades, and MC, cool shades, in the medium range. This was an utter guess, wild stab in the dark, based off of nothing. And I think it's gonna be fine, it's actually quite, a good match. It may be like a hair too dark for me, but I'm really happy given that that was an utter wild guess <laughs> based on nothing. Complete stab in the dark. If that does not oxidize, we'll be completely fine with bronzer and concealer and everything. Looks nice and neutral to me. Doesn't look like it's leaning super warm or super cool like some supposed neutral shades do. And then finally the lipstick and I chose shade 176. That just came like right out. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, these are not, these are just like not in at all. They're just fully loose in there. There doesn't seem to be like, oh, there we go. There we go. There is a click. Okay, that must've just been not clicked, I think on the way to me. Magnetic clasp. Again, it's got a nice weight. I think the eyeshadow quad is still like the most luxurious item that I've chosen so far. There you have the lipstick, beautiful embossing on there with the logo and also beautiful sort of velvety texture. This has 
that very like recognizable fragrance, very perfume. It smells like exactly like the Jimmy Choo lipsticks. If you have those, definitely a fragrance. I don't know that I could smell the foundation. We'll try again to see what the fragrance is like when I apply that. Oh, I think again, this is gonna be much more wearable than I thought. Got a nice bit of sheen there as well. Definitely a more soft matte finish. <sighs> that shade is right up my street. Okay, so that again, now it's clicked in. It's nice and solidly in there. I just think it wasn't clicked in when it arrived to me, but yeah, really beautiful component. Really nice. I believe that the more matte formula is in gold packaging and then the soft matte is the silver. Okay, so let's get these products on my face. I'm so excited. I'm gonna start off, I think, with the eyeshadow because that is the order that I would usually do my makeup. So I'm going to start off with this shade in here, right in the middle, that's like my transitional shade and my refer 16 brush really nice soft perfect transition shade that's very easy going shade nice size to get your brush in actually excuse my dog someone's clearly dared to come within 100 yards of our house <laughs> so of course he's just letting them know how terrifying he is love that shade perfect transitional shade for me building nicely blending nicely like for day to day I would probably just do this and a little bit of the shimmer you know you could use this for liner smoke it up I'm probably just going to pretend that that purple isn't in there a lot of the time to be honest but not today because of course you guys want to see the interesting shade you're not all boring like me I'm going to use my refer 33 and I'm going to work this into the crease this purple is 100% far more muted and understated than it looked in the pictures when it looked really quite sort of bright and like neon and alarming. But actually on the eye, this is really soft and subtle, which is great news for me. But if you really wanted this to be purple and look super bright, like it kind of does there, but even more so in the images, I think you might be disappointed. I am building that up just so that we can see. And it is really buildable, actually. Really got quite a bit more pigmentation and purple for my money through just building that up a little. This is a really nice mirror. You could absolutely use this really good size, but also good quality mirror. I definitely think like the eyeshadow component is significantly more luxurious than the foundation and the lipsticks. I don't think that they're bad. I just think this is like really like quite wow factor. And then the foundation and the lipstick is like nice, not like quite so special and like wow factor. Okay, so we've really got a bit more purple going on now, but still in a super wearable way. I'm so pleasantly surprised. I thought this was going to be like, I'll use it for a review and then it will sit in a drawer, but this is pretty and I like it. <laughs> So I'm gonna use my Rafa 15, quite a light fluffy brush and boop, the snoot. Not really, I'm just going to slightly deepen up my crease. I don't want it to be too smoky. I just wanna add a little bit of dimension. That shade is nice. It's really easy going. This palette is just so much more wearable and me than I thought it was going to be. I'm really pleasantly surprised. I fully thought this was gonna be a review purposes only purchase, but actually very wearable for me and much more me than I thought. Just goes to show, well, what it actually goes to show is that we would like the promo images to actually reflect the product accurately so we know what we're buying, please Prada. That's rule number one. I mean, so far, these shadows are all blending beautifully, building beautifully, doing everything I would want them to do. So, great, great news. Okay, and for the exciting part, the shimmer is, ooh, I mean, 
the brush is picking up a nice amount. It's always a good sign. Oh, she's pretty. She is pretty. I feel like so many luxury eyeshadow formulas are just always a little underwhelming. Oh, I mean, look at that. So many brands like Chanel, Tom Ford, Dior, they never just like give us the shimmer impact that, or I, I don't want to speak for us all, but for me, so many of those brands, they just, their shimmers are always really understated and I get it, you know, they're trying to be elegant, they're trying to be understated, but I want impact. When it comes to shimmer, I don't want it to be like, oh, there's barely a difference between the satin and the shimmer. <sighs> I want this. Thank you, Prada. They've realised some of us want the shimmer. We want it to pay off. And that's a dry brush as well. So, you know, if you wanted even more impact there, you could absolutely use a damp brush or you could use your finger and you'd get even more. I'm just using a bit of that middle shade again to just blend between the shimmers and, or between the shimmer, I should say, and the more satin shades. I wasn't expecting to love this, <laughs> but I do. Okay, it's a good start, it's a good start, guys. Just really pretty, like this is what I want from a shimmer. And what I want from a quad, I want everything to work together and be really pretty. I think if you wanted that purple to be like purple, you'll be disappointed. For me, I'm actually relieved. <laughs> but it's definitely quite muted and understated and you're not really seeing much purple. You're effectively seeing a neutral eyeshadow look, which depending on your vibe, your mood, you'll either be super excited and over the moon about, or you'll be furious personal preference. Let's just whack some Huda mascara on. Okay, well I am really pleasantly surprised. I think this looks so pretty. As far as I can see, I didn't get a speck of fallout at all, even from like that shimmer, which I applied with a dry brush. Or oh, maybe, yeah, I think I, maybe there's a couple of specks, a couple of specks using a dry brush. Really, really good looks so pretty. I'm really pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So I already primed my skin using my usual Tom Ford primer. I'll give this a good old little shake. Okay, so definitely a little bit of fragrance there. Nothing overwhelming. Doesn't smell like a super perfumey scent or anything. Quite a thin texture, but not water. I'm going to use my BK Beauty 101 to apply this foundation and let's see okay the fragrance is definitely there it's got that sort of it's a little bit fragrancy a little bit biscuit <laughs> do you know what i'm talking about whatsoever this is a really nice shade i'm really so relieved <laughs> i thought there was a high chance the shade was going to be so off that I wouldn't even be able to like use it for review purposes because I took such a stab in the dark. I had no idea what I was doing. That was the most sort of blind I've had to purchase a foundation shade in a long time. So I'm using a really small amount initially and it's giving me a very nice natural amount of coverage. And this is absolutely going to be workable. I think if you wanted a perfect shade and you are around my skin tone, then I would go like a shade or two lighter. But this is absolutely workable. And that's all we wanted. You know, I can also go back now and purchase a much lighter refill and mix, which I really appreciate. If I really love this foundation, I typically have to buy two shades of every foundation, so that is nothing new. I feel like it's a bit of an odd, like, mixture of products they've released, like a complexion product, a lip product, or a couple of lip products, and an eyeshadow product. Like, it's, you know, typically brands go eyeshadows, then they give us complexion in the form of, like, foundation and concealer, and then they come with, like, the cheek products. So this is like they're giving us like a little bit of everything at once. 
but no cheeks. Okay, so with a really small amount, I got to, I'd say like a medium coverage, pretty quickly and easily. And I feel like it evened everything out really nicely and naturally. It's got a beautiful sort of luminous, but like really not too glowy or dewy. It's like a lovely natural luminosity, even now before it's like fully dried down. I am gonna do like a little bit more just to see what we build to. I'm not really expecting this to build to anything more than like a solid medium. I think at the moment it's kind of the lighter end of medium. Yeah, and I would say now we've kind of built to a medium. Still not really using that much product though, but everything now is like redness, I feel like is pretty much gone. Discoloration pretty much gone, apart from this savage bit of melasma that just loves to arrive in summer. Everything else is looking really nice and even out. Really beautiful finish. Looks very skin-like, very natural. And it does look very smooth as well. Okay, I'm going to do concealer and let that dry down a second and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've done my concealer and a little bit of bronzer and I'm just gonna go back into this palette and finish off, I think I'm gonna do a bit of purp the purple on my lower lash line, just to kind of actually get some purple into the look, given that that is, you know, the shade that's supposed to be the pop shade. Using my Rafa 26, by the way. Okay, so I'm gonna try this shimmer shade as a highlight. I'm using my Synergy Fan Pro. It's definitely quite intense as a highlight for my taste, but it's buffing out quite nicely. You could absolutely use this as a highlight if you wanna get, you know, more for your money. They're pricey little palettes. You wanna use it as much as you can. I think that's super pretty, absolutely works as a highlighter. You've gotta be a little careful because it is quite a diddy little triangle, but no reason you couldn't. Really pretty. Got to be a little careful if you don't want anything too intense. But I think that's absolutely workable as a highlighter. And now to see if this middle shade would work as a blush. I've got quite a large blush brush here, so I'm being quite careful. This is the Sony G Classic Cheek from the Fundamentals set that just launched. I'm going to use this. Okay. So, definitely doesn't claim to be a blush. And what I noticed there is just as I'm applying it, it's not as soft and easy to blend as like a blush formula would be because, you know, eyeshadows are sort of designed to be more pigmented and you can just see the edges here. If this was a blush, it would blend a little easier, but still completely workable and especially with this brush is blending that out beautifully and the color I think is super pretty as blush so you absolutely can use this on cheeks as well you just got to be a little careful because that particular pan that's a pretty small pan especially with the triangular shape to get a blush brush in you're gonna have to be a little careful and pick you know a smaller brush and I would go lighter and just remember that you're working with an eyeshadow, so it's not necessarily going to be as kind of soft and easy to blend as a blush formula would be, because it is an eyeshadow designed to be a bit more pigmented. But I think that looks super pretty, definitely works as a cheek and eye little combo. Really happy with that. And finally, the lipstick. I'm not really sure which side <laughs> to use. I think it's this side. It's got a very crisp edge. Okay, I hate the shape of this. This is really hard to like use around the cupid's bow. It's like a complete flat square and like you're having to use it like on its edge and then I can't really see what I'm doing. Mm, I don't like the shape of this. 
Okay, what I'm doing is I'm kind of like putting it inside my lip and then like running it around the inside, but it feels fiddly. This could just be a me thing, but. Yeah, I don't like the shape of it. I don't think it's as pigmented as I was expecting either. I wonder if the more matte formula is more pigmented and this is more of like a medium opacity, even with like building it up. Not sheer, but it's not a full blown opacity. Like if we're talking Lisa Eldridge mattes, Pat McGrath mattes, this is definitely not as sort of hyper pigmented and full opacity as those. It's more of a, like a medium opacity. Not a big deal, like the shade. I think it's really pretty. It's nice that like my eye look and my cheeks are quite neutral today to have like that pop of color. I think it's really pretty. It's definitely got quite a shiny finish. I'd say this is like a satin. I don't really think this is a soft matte. It's more of a satin finish. It's also really sitting in my lip lines. I don't know how well, I'll try and zoom in quite a bit, but if you just look here, I feel like it's quite sitting in my lip lines and it's not super even. I feel like we had to have a flop <laughs> in here somewhere and I feel like this is it for me. Not a huge fan of that. It feels okay. It doesn't feel super comfortable in light either. It just feels like I've got lipstick on. I can feel I've got lipstick on. It feels okay, not uncomfortable, but not super comfortable and hydrating either. I do feel like it's just slightly clingy in lip lines and texture, and it's not perfectly even either. Obviously no transfer resistance whatsoever, because it is a much more shiny finish than I was expecting. Being a soft matte, I was kind of expecting it to be along the lines of like the Charlotte Tilbury matte formula or the Pat McGrath matte formula, where it's like a satin matte. This is just, I think, a satin. Where's it gone? I've lost it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't love the lipstick. Okay, so obviously this foundation has had a good few minutes to dry down now, so we can kind of see how it's sitting and the true finish of it. I think it's beautiful. So natural. I really like the shade. Nice neutral shade. It's not a neutral that's actually warm or a neutral that's actually really pink, which they a lot of them are, let's face it. I feel like it's a, a nice actual neutral undertone. A very nice natural coverage. Definitely buildable to medium. Evened out my skin tone beautifully. It's so flattering. Like on my trouble zone, the muzzle zone around here, where I've got texture and lines and all kinds of problems. It's looking beautiful. It hasn't even creased in my smile lines, which 99% of foundations do. You know, they love to seek out those little lines and just hang out in there. It's looking so smooth around this like problem zone. I'm really impressed. It's so flattering, smooth, but natural. And it's got that really nice luminosity, but again, it's a very skin-like natural luminosity. It's not like shine or glow as such. Feels very nice and lightweight as well, the foundation. Looks really nice on my forehead. Really happy with that. Feels slightly tacky, but as I'm touching my skin there, nothing is transferring. So that's a good sign because it's probably not fully dried down yet. Of course, with foundation, I will wear this for the rest of the day and I'll let you know how it got on. But I will continue to test this out and as always give you my more comprehensive, longer term thoughts in my monthly roundup once I've given it a good try out across, you know, several days, several different weather, different types of days and let you know my more developed thoughts in that roundup once I've given it a good going over. The eyeshadow is the surprise hit so far for me. I kind of thought the foundation would be solid. I didn't expect to like the eyeshadow. Not that I thought the formula would be bad. I thought the shimmer would be way more muted than this, not as impactful as it is. And I didn't think I was going to like the color story, but I think it's so pretty and beautiful. And I love for myself that that purple was much more muted than I expected because I didn't want a bright purple color. That's just not my preference. So I'm really excited that actually that purple is wearable for me and this whole palette is wearable for me. 
I love a surprise, a pleasant one. So this is definitely like the surprising hit. Actually, all of these quads may be more wearable and more me than I thought. I'm really excited to see more swatches and more reviews on these. I think the packaging as well of the eyeshadow is my favorite. I think it's really luxurious. It feels weighty. I think it's beautiful and simple yet pretty. And it feels luxurious. Plus it's just really practical, large, good quality mirror, decent size pans to get brushes in and actually works really nicely on the cheeks as well, which is a bonus. The more you can get for your money at this price point, the better, you know? Foundation is absolutely a so far so good situation. We're gonna keep trying it and keep you posted. Lipstick, should we call it a fail? I don't know. I like the packaging. The biggest issue I had with it is the shape of this lipstick, which I didn't even clock when I was like swatching it and looking at it. I didn't really look at it and think, what an odd shape, that's never going to work. As I was trying to use it on my lips, it was just completely impractical. That might just be me. I'd love to know what other people think of this. I could just not get around my Cupid's bow at all. It was really tricky. It's completely like square top and there's just no sort of easy way to get it around the curves of your lip. I just, I struggled with it. I don't know if that's just me. Let me know in the comments if you've tried it. Did you think this was tricky to use or is it is it just me? It probably is. The color itself is pretty, less pigmented than I expected, less matte than I expected. I don't think it's going to be long wearing because of that. And also in like the center of my lips, perhaps where the lips are a little drier, just a little uneven and a little catchy, you know? So for me, it's like the eyeshadow one, the foundation is a solid, medium could overtake the eyeshadow depending on how it goes over the next few days and the wear test and then this is like not even in the race okay this is the item to skip for me because even if you don't have the issues i had with the shape and everything i feel like it's it's definitely not like a wow factor we've never seen a lipstick like it kind of situation you know we've got a lot of lipsticks at this point it's gonna have to be really special to wow us and i think this was just kind of it's fine. Okay, so there you have it. Those are all of my first impressions on the products from Prada Makeup. A very solid start, a very solid start. I'm now excited for this brand. Whereas before I just thought like lots of us, oh, another luxury brand entering the makeup arena. You know, who really cares? Who really needs another brand at this point? But we're delivering solid products. So now I'm starting to get a little excited, okay? Very pleasantly surprised today. Interested to see what they could come out with next. As always with a brand new brand, these are permanent products. Watch a good few reviews, okay? Watch a good few reviews, check for swatches. Definitely watch some of your shade twins before you go buying the foundation because it was a struggle even for me when I always have to buy foundation online. I feel like I'm an expert at it and it was a struggle. So <laughs> proceed with caution, watch a good few reviews. Definitely find a shade twin before you go buying a random shade of this foundation. And please let us know if you have tried any of these products, what was your experience? Do you agree about the lipstick shape? Is that just me? What's happening? Have you tried the foundation? Let us know your shade <laughs> in the comment section down below. Help each other out as always. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.